What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you another Transformers video. Something that's been on my mind since the live action filmography has expanded to what it is today is the art of transforming, or in layman's terms, converting. And today we're going to talk about how that concept has declined with each installment of the live action film verse. Now before we dive into today's topic, I wanted to show you an upcoming survival MMORPG called Starwalker. I know you're probably thinking to yourself when you hear this name, does this involve lightsaber duels? But no, it's not any of that mindless dribble, it's something that makes you think. What would it really be like to survive in a space habitat with little to no resources? How could I build a civilization from the ground up? Star Walker makes you wonder these things, and it's an upcoming MMORPG taking place 1000 years into the future metaverse in a space cylinder. Unlike other survival MMORPGs, everything you do in this game will have long term ramifications, and everything isn't set in a scripted or predetermined format. Players are born into the cylinder with a random set of attributes that are divided up into stamina, strength, and agility to help you defend yourself. You can't just choose your age or gender, but whatever you do get will have their own set of challenges to overcome just like in the real world. You might find yourself growing attached to your highly experienced character, but beware! You only live one life, so if you die, that means your character dies just like in the real world. In order to survive the game, it's very important to find a group of people to band up with for resources and for protection against other groups of players. This is a new frontier for mankind, and it takes you into space, so check out Star Walker and get the most awesome survival experience. You can do so by clicking on the link that will be provided in the description of this video. But yeah guys, one of the most exciting aspects of the Transformers brand is watching the characters transform from vehicles to robot modes. Translating the transformation sequences into live action was something the films absolutely had to nail. I remember wondering how Michael Bay and Paramount were even going to be able to achieve what seemed to be an impossible feat when the film was first announced. Making a character like Optimus Prime transform from a truck to a giant robot sounds easy on paper, which it probably was since someone had to literally draw the cell animations, but having him do this in a realistic setting with a completely different format that involved CG was a totally different ballgame. Of course, one could argue that CGI wasn't necessarily a foreign approach to animated Transformers. It's been a thing since the 90s when Beast Wars ushered in a new era of robots and the Unicron trilogy brought the formula back in the early 2000s, but those were done back when computer generated characters hadn't quite hit their mark. Even during the new millennium, the earlier 2000s, there were a lot more misses than hits when it came to editing in an imaginary character to coincide with a real person. For the longest time, the textures for CGI weren't always realistic, and the compositing and shadows were so bad it made characters look like they were hovering in a scene as opposed to actually being in one. But luckily, around the time we crept up on the early 2010s, VFX were finally hitting their stride. Hard metal surfaces were one of the things special effects studios began to perfect, which ultimately led to characters like Iron Man making his live action debut to the silver screen. When it was finally time to reveal the live action iterations of the Cybertronians, we were essentially blown away. I want to show you guys a recently uploaded clip of an in theater crowd reaction to the Autobots arriving on Earth in Transformers 2007. As you heard, the crowd was ecstatic to see the Autobots transform for the very first time in live action. I know a lot of you guys who saw the movie that day can relate to me when I say that this gave me chills when I saw it for the first time in theaters on opening night. We were witnessing something that was not only nostalgic but poetry in motion. Usually a scene such as this one would be eye rolling since it's a pretty lengthy one that pans in on all the gears and wheels rotating on Optimus Prime's body as it emerges from his vehicle mode. But mind you, this is him and his group getting used to their new earth based parts. I like to think of it as stretching their muscles. The ride to this newly discovered planet was probably a long one, so they had to get used to their new physiques. But nonetheless, I still am blown away by this sequence because it still holds up very well even to this day. The sequences showing the characters transform, coupled with Steve Jablomski's incredible score, inspired an incredible amount of awe and wonder in the audience. There was an impressive amount of thought and care put into how these vehicles looked on screen, ensuring their transformations had weight and were believable. Three quarters of the CG effects were done by Industrial Light and Magic. The other quarter was done by Digital Domain, a company Michael Bay bought shortly before signing to the Transformers movies. Funny enough, Digital Domain would be the same company responsible for the awesome CG animated trailers used to promote Transformers Fall of Cybertron. But I digress. 
Going back to the behind the scenes featurettes of the first Transformers film reveals how much the creative crew cared. So much time was put in making sure that each part of the car would be used on the robot and nothing would magically disappear. During the time he spent understanding what the Transformers were all about, Michael Bay noticed that the characters from the G1 cartoon didn't necessarily transform as they more so shifted their body mass into their alt modes. This is something that was noticeable with a lot of characters, the most notorious one being Megatron which is arguably the most absurd quote unquote transformation. So to prevent this whole mass shifting debacle from being a thing in his live action film verse, he made sure that the size of the robots was in scale with the size of each vehicle they transformed into and that they could fit in their vehicle counterparts. Extensive wireframe models were shown to Michael Bay to make sure that these strange fantastical machines could feel real and tangible in a live action space. The Optimus Prime computer generated model consisted of 10,108 individual pieces, 1.8 million polygons, 27,744 rig nodes, and 2,336 texture maps. The volume of all the pieces combined came to 154 cubic meters. Altogether, the Autobot computer generated models consisted of 35,592 total pieces, 7.4 million polygons, 95,247 rig nodes, and 20,258 texture maps. If you add in the Decepticons, there are 60,217 pieces of geometry, 123.5 million polygons, 144,341 rig nodes, and 34,215 texture maps. That may not seem like much compared to today's cinematic visual effects feats, but it was a big deal back when Transformers was gearing up to be released in theaters. If you noticed, almost every scene there was a lot of emphasis put on transformations within this film. Something that worked perfectly with the scenes were Michael Bay's beauty angles. Since he had a history of doing commercials for upcoming products and models, he knew how to get the best shots of the Transformers when they were in action. Scenes like the high speed chase between Optimus Prime and Bone Crusher instantly come to mind. Based off the amount of damage they cause as their transforming parts drag across the asphalt shows the insane level of ambition and attention to detail the VFX team had. Like this movie really put focus on the characters transforming, which is a good thing. I mean, the movie is called Transformers. Even though the next two installments weren't received to the same degree as the first, they still added that extra bit of emphasis on the art of transforming. However, as more sequels were produced, the transforming part of the Transformers became less and less important. Sequences of the vehicles transforming weren't given as much time as they were in the first three films, resulting in these things feeling less and less awe-inspiring. Instead, more time was dedicated to the bombastic and absurd action sequences and goofy comedy, and unfortunately, it took away from the all these characters could achieve. There was no more seeing Optimus pull up to save the day in an exaggerated transformation, and no more rotating arm cannons from Ironhide. May he rest in peace. By the time we got to Transformers Age of Extinction, it became frustratingly apparent that I wasn't going to be seeing sequences that had me in awe. I was mostly going to be seeing zoomed out shots of different set pieces with the occasional transformation that lacked memorable scores. There's not one Transformers scene I can point out that is my favorite from Age of Extinction, and that's because there barely are any. But if I were to choose, I'd say Grimlock's transformation, because it was super imposing and a test of might for Optimus to see if he could command the Dinobot leader. But everything else was just meh. Most of the Transformers shots were real quick with little to no emphasis, or the camera was pulled so far back you don't see any of the detail on the moving pieces. The way they did my boy Drift was wrong. Like, how are you gonna screw up the transformation sequence for the first and only Autobot Triple Changer in the live action film franchise? If I didn't show you guys these scenes, you probably wouldn't even notice. But anyways, I think a lot of you are gonna ask me why I haven't mentioned Optimus Prime's transformation into his new Western Star truck, and that's simply because it wasn't really a transformation, or at least I don't consider it as such. Now, to the casual viewer, it may have come off like we were witnessing Optimus transform from his truck mode to robot mode, but to the more analytical and very observant viewer such as myself, this is nothing more than a corner cutting tactic. Usually for me to consider something an actual transformation, I have to see it from start to finish, meaning it has to be the full vehicle in its normal state, the transformation process, and then the robot mode. But if you notice, this scene totally throws out the normal state. It shows Bumblebee walking up to the other Autobots and cuts to Optimus as he's already started transforming into his new night mode. Is it impressive? Yes. But an actual full transformation? No. You don't get the complete scene of the Western Star Truck pulling up and transforming. 
The same can be said for Bumblebee. You see his black 67 Camaro start to transform, but instead of seeing the transformation in its entirety, it cuts away and when it comes back we just see him walking. And this to me was a total missed opportunity to highlight these new looks in all their glory. It was already a downer that all the mechanical and angular designs were ditched for a more human inspired and proportionate aesthetic, but it really felt like these guys were nothing more than walking robots and not actual alien transformers. What's even worse is that the newcomers such as Hound, Crosshairs, and Drift don't even have on-screen vehicle form transformations. Of course we see Drift transform into his helicopter mode, but we never see him and his newcomer buddies transform into their car based modes. If I were to take a wild guess why these things were absent, it'd have to be because the movie already had a lot going on. With each installment, the producers tried to make them bigger and bigger, sometimes resulting in extremely insane budgets. There were probably a lot of things ILM wanted to include in the film but couldn't because of the demand for the more extravagant pieces such as the big battle in Hong Kong. And to alleviate this need for more spectacle, the producers probably opted for a less time consuming technique in the form of Transformium a programmable matter that the Autobots and Decepticons were made from. However, unlike the mechanical transformations of the previous films, Transformium functioned more like a liquid metal. It meant that sequences of the new made Transformers felt weightless and suddenly out of place in the franchise. So by the time Transformers The Last Night rolled around, the novelty of Transforming completely wore off. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are full transformation sequences in the movie but they're treated in the same fashion as Drift's helicopter sequence in Age of Extinction, where instead of getting that dramatic detailed emphasis, we get a very brief and zoomed out view. And once again, Optimus Prime is left out without any on-screen transformation scenes. Funny enough, the first time we've ever gotten a scene of Optimus transforming from his robot night mode to his vehicle form was in this insurance commercial titled Optimus Prime's Time Off, and that was released about a month ago. So as you can see, by the time we got to the tail end of Michael Bay's run of the TF franchise, the art of transforming was an afterthought. Although Travis Knight's Bumblebee did give us more than a few transformation sequences, they still paled in comparison to the likes of TF-07 and Revenge of the Fallen. While they were good, the more simplified G1 designs made the transformations a little basic. The only impressive sequence we got was Shatter and Dropkick transforming from their aerial to ground-based vehicle modes and then to their robot modes, which isn't a surprise surprised because the triple changing style was one of the selling points of the movie. Everything else was just okay. But I have faith that we will get back to those grandiose sequences in the future installments. It's been reported that Paramount and E1 hired artists that specialize in futuristic robot designs to work on Transformers Rise of the Beast. So there is hope. But with that I want to end this video. I know there are probably going to be a lot of you who disagree with some of the things I said in this video and if that's the case then please explain it in the comment section below. As always, I asked you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. But if you really enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you shared it with all your friends and followers on all the different social media platforms. Sharing is caring. Don't forget to check out Starwalker. You can do so by following them on their YouTube channel, which is right here, and their Twitter, which is here, to get an early access key. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.